Yes, <clears throat> good morning class. Uh, this is your teacher, Daddy Cross. Uh, I hope your test was fine. I know the test was not difficult. So, congratulations. I've seen your scores. Many of you performed well. Well, some of you performed woefully too, but very few people. Probably because you've not been coming to class. So, if your score is very low, and if you score less than 15 over 20, then you should try and make up in the next test. However, we'll continue with our class. I will be starting the topic water. Water is life, we know that. But in chemistry, water is more than life. So we're going to see the component of water, what makes up water. We're going to see why some waters are hard, you know. When you hear the word hard water, it's like an irony. Hard water, soft water. We have hard water, we have soft water. Then, how can we prepare water? Then, what causes water pollution? These are the things we'll be considering in this topic, uh, under this topic. When I'm in the chemistry lab, can you see? Uh, this is the laboratory. So, so that you can get the best. So, this is the structure of water. Water is a um, is a molecule containing oxygen and hydrogen. The shape of water is bent. Is <clears throat> bent. That's water shape. Water is bent. Or you call it angular or V shape. You can see the shape now. Looks like a V. You call it angular or V shape. So the bond angle in water molecule between the two hydrogen water molecule is 105 degrees Celsius. So that's the bond angle. And what actually caused that is this. If you draw the uh, if you draw the covalent structure of water very well. You observe that there are two lone pairs of electron. One here, one this is one lone pair, then another one here, another one here. So the oxygen atoms has two lone pair. I'm trying to draw lone pair. Okay, this one lone pair. So this lone pair and this lone pair are on oxygen atom. So there's there is there's a repulsion between the bond between the lone pair that is there so those two lone pair they are repelling themselves that's why the bond angle was very small one zero uh, one zero five degrees celsius so it's due to the repulsion of the two lone pairs on oxygen atom so don't forget the shape of water is bent or angular or v-shaped if you like it's non-linear and the bond angle between the two hydrogen atoms in the water molecule is 105 degree degrees so that's the structure of water okay i've, I've already explained to you that there's a repulsion between the two lone pair don't forget i said there are two lone pair one year one year this is a lone pair, 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 a lone pair. So, this repulsion is what caused the shape to be V-shaped and the board angle to be 105 degrees. <clears throat> now, what are the, uh, the components or the chemistry of water? In terms of the intermolecular bond, remember intermolecular forces are the one responsible for the boiling point of uh, covalent compounds. So water itself is a covalent compound. The oxygen and the hydrogen atoms of water 
are covalently bonded together. You can see this thick, thick arrow. Yeah, see the structure of water. So, so you, you can see the thick bond. This thick bond is a covalent bond. This bond is a covalent bond. Those are the bond between hydrogen and oxygen in water. Hyd hydrogen and oxygen in water. That's covalent bond. It's very strong. Now, this is another water molecule. This one is a water molecule. This is a separate water molecule. This is a separate water molecule. This is a separate water molecule. And we can have hundreds and millions of such molecules inside uh, one liter of water. So, you can see that hydrogen, uh, the water molecules contains covalent bond inside intramolecular covalent bond. But if you observe, you will see that between the two water molecules, there are dotted lines. Can you see those dotted lines? Those dotted lines. Those dotted lines are intermolecular bond or forces, if you like, because they operate between two molecules. So it's not an intra bond, it's an intermolecular bond. Is between the atoms of one molecule of water here yeah, and the atom of another molecule of water. You can see, you can see that this 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 oxygen now belongs to the molecule one. This molecule two is attracted to the hydrogen of molecule two. You can see the oxygen of molecule 2 now getting attached to the to the hydrogen of molecule 3 now also the oxygen of molecule 3 joined to the hydrogen of molecule 4 so you can see the intermolecular hydrogen bonding that bonding that broken line is called hydrogen bonding Hydrogen bonding is a type of bond that occurs when hydrogen is covalently bonded to an electronegative atom like oxygen. Remember the definition. So, water contains hydrogen bonding. So, the broken line represents hydrogen bond, while the thick lines represent covalent bond within a molecule. Don't forget that. So, those are the chemistry within the water molecule and that hydrogen bonding is responsible for the high boiling point of water i already told you before that hydrogen bonding normally increase the boiling point unusually unusually so uh don't forget that now let's move to the next thing sources of water of course you are familiar with this natural water now can be found on the earth's surface from the following sources from rain rain water is a natural source from spring you know those water that comes out in, from inside the rock call them spring from well water the one you dig under the ground before it comes out river water that flowing water that flows on top of soil River water, lake water is a little bit stagnant. Sea water is a body of marine, uh, uh, marine, uh, marine base. Sea water, the one you see, all those, uh, all those, um, all those bad beach, those water, they are sea water. So, those are the natural sources of water where we can get water naturally naturally where we can get water naturally so let's move on now of these natural sources of water rain water is the purest form of natural water rain water is the purest form of natural water and why is that so 
The reason is because uh, rainwater always results from condensation, that is, uh, there's water vapor in the cloud. Is that okay? So, when they condense, then they will come back to the earth as rainfall. So, it's a form of distilled water, like natural distilled water, because it is actually from water vapor that's condensed. It's just like you boiling a wa uh, boiling water now. You will see steam that has already condensed on the top of that pot. <laughs> that's a distilled water, and distilled water is the purest form of water. So the natural rainwater that looks like a distilled uh, the natural water that, uh, that resembles distilled water is rainwater because it's formed by com by condensation of water vapor in the atmosphere so don't forget that very very important spring water is also pure next to rain water but it has some amount of impurities like mineral salt mineral salt is major water is major impurity in a spring water because it's coming out from a rock there are many minerals in a rock but there are there are little or no impurities like dust and bacteria. The uh, the major impurity in spring water is actually mineral salt due to the nature of the spring. Then where water you know that one is obtained from by digging the the ground, so it contains a lot of clay. It contains a lot of mineral salt. So. Uh, it's, it's less pure than spring water and spring water is less pure than rain water if, but if the water is very very deep it can be purer than when the water when the well water is actually shallow don't forget that so river water lake water and sea water you know those ones they are exposed form of water so a lot of air is dissolved in them they contain a lot of dissolved air they contain mineral salts because the bacteria, you know, they flow. So they carry a lot of things on the on the floor, then uh, on the ground as they go. Then it contains organic matter, remains of organic matter, you know, uh, decaying matter, dead organic matter that are decaying. They can carry that. They can carry those things along as they are flowing. So, uh, river water, lake water, and sea water, they are the least form of natural pure water. Why the water is the purest? So, uh, nevertheless, any of them can be pumped to your home as tap water by the government, but they must have undergone a scientific treatment. As a chemist, you can work in the water corporation treating water for them. They have a laboratory in the water corporation. So they treat water. You can treat any water and people will drink it. In fact, most of the water that we are using, they are from the dam. So from the dam, uh, that's where we get most of this uh, water and very, very dirty water from the dam. Imagine how dirty the water from the dam would be. So, but when they undergo purification process, that is when we purify them, and we make the water to pass through some processes, they become very, 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 very clean. Remember, that's when you have tap water, the one that government supplies to your home. As a chemist, you can treat water, and then you will drink it, and you will not have any... Uh, you won't have any health challenge because you have undergone all the normal process of treating water. So, <clears throat> uh, what are examples of treated water? Uh, water that have been treated, we have different examples of them. Um, and they are usually made for special purposes. Examples of treated water is distilled water. You make the sea water by evaporating the water and condensing the vapor that comes after. That's the sea water. Pipe bone water. 
undergo about five stages uh, before it can be uh, pumped into your homes. We are going to see those stages now. Deionized water. Deionized water. Deionized water. That's a. Um, Deionized water. That's water that has. That has been made to pass through the iron exchange resin. Okay, I may be speaking big grammar, but you, but you, uh, but you understand later. So the ions have been removed. So there's no ion inside the water. It's called deionized water. Then chlorinated water is used in swimming pool. So it's different from pipe bomb water. You chlorinate water to kill germs inside the water. Then you can use it in the swimming pool. But you don't ordinarily kill germs in a pipe bomb water. You do more than killing germs. You do a lot of things apart from killing germs. We control pH of water, we remove odor from water, we remove color from water, we remove organic impurities from water. So even before killing the germs or after killing the germs. So uh, that's why this is different from this. Yeah, chlorine water is chlorine is, is water that you have added chlorine. So when you are chlorine to the water, germs will die. Then you can continue to use it. In swimming pool, so but the sea water, uh, but, but pipe bone water, the one that is sent into your home by the government, is uh, is going to undergo more processes than just chlorination. So, uh, so, uh, so, so, so these are examples of treated water: the sea water, pipe bone water, deionized water, chlorinated water. Those are examples of treated water. Don't forget natural water. These ones are not treated. Rain water. Rain water is, is natural water. Spring water is natural water. Where water is natural. River, lake, and sea water, they are also natural. They are not treated. They are natural. But treated water, they are water that you specially prepared for a particular purpose. Like the sea water now is used in the laboratory. Pipe bone water is used mainly for drinking. So the requirement will be different from the one you use in the lab. So chlorinated water is used in swimming pool. While deionized water is also used in the laboratory or for uh, preparing drugs. So this treated water are for special purposes. Don't forget that. So this distilled water it's a chemically pure water that is prepared by condensing steam. You evaporate the water, then you condense the steam. You, uh, you already know this one for condensing steam. It's called light big condenser. That thing that lie very, very big. So that light big condenser. Now, what do you use the sea water to do? Uh, for drinking, but not really meant for drinking because it doesn't contain any iron. Your body requires some amount of ions. Then, majorly, it is used in the process uh, in the laboratory for carrying out experiments. That's the major purpose of the steel water. It's used in car batteries for making car batteries. It's used for preparing injection, intravenous solution. You want to prepare injection, all those things that they normally give you when you have malaria. You can't just use any water to do it so that you will not die. Uh -huh. So we use the sea water, chemically pure water, to do it. So uh, uh, the sea water is uh, water generally now, not the sea water now. Please take note of this. The following uh, form of water, not just the sea water. What, uh, the, this one is not just the sea water alone, or water now generally. For water now, generally, whether the tea or not, water is used for cooking and for drinking. Water is a means of transport. Of course, you you know that all those boats, all those ships, all those canoe, they travel on water. So it's a means of transport, and you can avoid the dock in Lagos if you take ferry to some part of Lagos. Uh -huh. So it's a means of transport. Transport then it's used for making drugs. 
I've, uh, I've talked about that. So these are function of water, not just the sea water, but this, 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 uh, function of the sea water. So I may mention about the ionized water, the water that has been made to pass through ion exchange resin. Ion exchange resin. So that's the ionized water. High bond water. So it has a lot of step. I'll tell you about that. The chlorine water, the water that you had chlorine to kill germ.